Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Alaska College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event this afternoon. So we have some fantastic schools here with us today. I'm excited to, to kick this off. My name is Laura, by the way, and I'll be your facilitator for this session. So before we get started, just a couple of quick housekeeping items for you. You've probably already noticed this, but your camera and microphone are off. So the panelists cannot see or hear you. We still definitely want to get your questions and hear from you, though, so please feel free to use that Q&A button you should see at the bottom of your screen there to type your questions to our presenters at any time. So don't feel like you need to hold those until the end or, you know, wait until um, that the school you're wanting to ask a question is presenting. Please feel free to just drop those in as they come to your mind. This is just one of um, many different sessions happening um, this, this afternoon. So this is the final one for today. Um, however, there will be more panels tomorrow actually. So would encourage you to check out the schedule. Um, so you can see the schedule as well as all the recordings at strivescan.com slash Alaska. So with that, I would like to actually go ahead and, and kick this off and turn it over to our very first school. So Jessica, take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Jessica. I am one of the admissions counselors here at CSU Maritime Academy. It's one of our abbreviated names. Our full name is actually California State University Maritime Academy, which doesn't fit on most government forums. You also may have heard of us as Cal Maritime. That's one of our favorite nicknames. Now that picture we're opening up with, that's actually an aerial shot of our campus. It's one of my favorites because it showcases not only Bodner Field, which is where we host dodgeball and kickball tournaments, which was pretty fun that got us through the pandemic, but it also shows that we truly are a waterfront campus. There's a lot of institutions that say, hey, you know, we're right next to the water and they're 15 minutes away or sometimes an hour away. The waterfront is actually a part of our academic space. So it's, it's a learning environment for our students. Um, it's also a recreation environment for our students are able to take out kayaks and paddle boards, as well as some of our small sailboats, which are about 22 feet long, um, all the way up to our tugboats in some of their classes. We're right off of Highway 80. So what that's gonna do in the Bay Area is it's gonna connect you to Berkeley, Oakland, San Francisco. And then if you wanna head northbound, it takes you up to Sacramento, which is our state capital. So all of those places are large metropolises and they also have major colleges so there's always something to do so it means that students can hop right on 80 go up go find really good tacos or go thrifting or go to a festival especially now that you know everyone's getting their vaccines and their boosters and be able to come back to a little bit of a quieter and calmer environment to study so um, we have a few bragging points that we, we love to share with folks. Um, we like to think of our, our campus overall as just a living learning laboratory. So as you saw on, on that um, photo, like I said, different spaces, we're, we're able to utilize different spaces along the waterfront, but we also have state-of-the-art labs and simulators for a number of our majors as well, including the training ship, the Golden Bear. And I'm gonna talk about her in a little bit. Um, we definitely, we, we take take the CSU's mandate of teaching by doing to heart. We do everything to 110%. So we do have a very small uh, student to faculty ratio. It's about 14 to one. And actually in one of our majors, it's nine to one. That's marine engineering technology. Our average class size is about 18. So in some classes, it's actually gonna get a little bit smaller because physically there's not that much space for that many people in those laboratories, but it means everyone's gonna get hands-on experience in those, in those different areas. We are a residential campus. So we're gonna guarantee you housing with pretty much waterfront views, which is always a perk, um, because we require that students live on campus all four years. Now, we have seven majors. They all lead back to the water, but as a as a CSU, they're well-rounded. So while um, a number of different industries are the focus of these degrees, you are prepared to, to kind of blaze a trail into other programs as well. Now, I do want to give a shout out to our business program. We have two new concentrations for our business program, and that includes international supply chain and international maritime business. Now, I'm a little biased because I graduated from our business program. But when you couple its hands-on approach to uh, logistics and the study of the supply chain, um, um, and then also couple it with um, the theories and, and um, 
of, how, of business practices and management practices, our business program definitely sets apart from a number of the other business programs that focus on logistics. I think it also plays into why we're one of the only maritime academies west of Texas. Now, Global Studies and Maritime Affairs, I like to tell students, if you like to argue, this is going to be the program for you. It's a policy-based major. So if you think about how a bill gets enacted, someone has to research that bill. Someone has to write that bill and then rewrite it and rewrite it a few more times. And then there have to be people who are um, trying to convince senators and um, uh, congresspersons to pass these different bills. And so a lot of different positions that global studies and maritime affairs graduates can do is along that kind of chain to get a bill enacted. Now, oceanography is our newest major. We're really excited about this. It's the study of the ocean as a whole. And obviously this is a hot topic. The ocean is one of our last explored areas. We know more about outer space than we do about the ocean and that's in our backyard. So there's a lot of room for growth in terms of job opportunities in oceanography. And a key point of where we're making sure our students are eligible for jobs is making sure that they get extra um, data collection experience. So not only are they studying the data, but they're going out on the ships and they're collecting the plankton samples and all of that. Now our mechanical engineering program, it's a very traditional research and design program with a twist. Because it's at a Maritime Academy and it's got exposure to marine engine systems, there is the opportunity to get a license which would allow you to sail as a marine engineer like the marine engineering technology students do or mechanical engineers can choose an energy design option. Of course, there's a focus on sustainability there or a mechanical design option, looking to make um, engine designs more sustainable. Now, facilities engineering technology and marine engineering technology are pretty similar, except one eventually goes to work on land and one eventually goes to work on ships, but they're maintaining engine systems and all of the different systems that are incorporated. So the HVAC systems, electrical, the generators, um, you know, no matter how big or how small. So there's a lot of opportunity in very different industries for facilities engineers and marine engineers. Now, marine transportation is probably, I want to say, the most unique major in the Cal State system. Again, only place west of Texas where you can get this degree, and that's learning how to drive large ships. Now, if you recognize the acronyms for any of the service um, armed services, you may recognize USCG, that stands for United States Coast Guard. I want to emphasize, while we look just as good, we are not a military school. We are a California State University, so we're a public institution, but we offer a Coast Guard license that's tied into um, the, the it, they're the regulating body. Now with campus life, I always like to say, yes, there's still plenty to do. We work hard, so we play just as hard. There's tons of clubs that are both recreation and you know professional-based clubs as well. Um, there are a number of different sports teams um, as well as intramural sports teams, which means you compete on campus versus off campus. Every single student in our program is required to travel. So where you go and what you do depends on your major. So students that are in the engineering and marine transportation programs go on board our training ship, the Golden Bear, for about 60 days, at least one of their summers. And students that are in our business, global studies, and oceanography program um, under a different summer in their curriculum will actually fly to another country. And they live in that country um, and kind of get immersed in the professional culture. Now, uh, with our business, global studies, and oceanography programs, they're not currently impacted. So if you meet our minimum requirements, we're going to be able to guarantee you an offer. So for a student from Alaska, what we're looking for is at least a 3.0 academic GPA from your 10th and 11th grade coursework, key thing being academic coursework. Um, and if you don't quite have that 3.0, there are a few other factors we can look at if you have a mid-range GPA, which is a, a above a 2.5 to a 2.99. Now our other majors are impacted, which means they are competitive to get into. So in addition to our minimum requirements, we're also specifically gonna look at your math GPA, courses you took in the STEM areas, as well as any type of educational, maritime or leadership participation. All of those are gonna check little boxes and assign points to help us rank you for the competition. Now with out-of-state students, you qualify under WUI, and I'm sure you've all heard about WUI. It's an amazing program, but it means that you only pay 150% of Cal California uh, tuition compared to um, 180 or sorry compared to over 250 percent which would be someone from like Georgia or Texas now all this information is all available on our website and I know that I'm getting close to my ending time so I'm just gonna get to my last slide which is our contact information I'm gonna post this all in the chat please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or want to set up a personal counseling appointment thanks so much and I'm gonna yield my floor uh, back to the next school Thanks so much, Jessica. And just wanted to reiterate, definitely drop those questions in the Q&A button um, as you have them come up. I think we've already got one in there. So thanks for sending that over. And next up, we have St. Martin's University. 
All right, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Michael. I'm a admissions counselor at St. Martin's University and a proud alumni of the university. Uh, we are located in Lacey, Washington. So Washington State, this is a little geograph uh, geographical view of where we are in Washington, very central between the major cities of Seattle and Portland. Um, I am gonna show a quick little video for you guys. So um, hopefully, hopefully enjoy it. Dear future, Dear future Saints, I could share with you all the things that make St. Martin's so great. And I just want to make sure that the sound is showing. Yes, we can hear it. Okay, perfect. Dear Future, Dear Saints, future Saints, I could share with you all the things that make St. Martin's so great. Our small class sizes, our beautiful campus, our ideal Pacific Northwest location. But St. Martin's is so much more than that. You see, there's this spirit that, that lives beyond these hallways and classroom doors. It's outside these red brick buildings. It's down our winding walkways and trails and above our towering evergreens. It's present in all of us, compelling us, challenging us to pursue excellence and seek deeper understanding to see and change the world at home and beyond to connect with my culture while finding my own voice to create meaningful relationships and make a positive difference this is why saint martin's is so special to me and to everyone it touches this feeling of compassion and community, welcoming and connecting all who come here. Dear future saints, together we will learn and together we will grow. And as saints, together we will live with heart. Alrighty, perfect. So that was just a quick little snapshot um, to give you an idea of what our campus is all about. Um, we are very big on just supporting the individualistic student and that growth mindset of making sure that you find who you are as a person um, throughout these four years. Um, I had an amazing time here as a student. Um, and yeah, we offer very small classroom sizes here. Here on the left is an example of a bigger state or public university that you might see an average lecture hall to look like. Um, however, our largest lecture hall is maybe up to 60 students. So um, an example of maybe more something similar that St. Martin's offers is on the picture on the right. Um, average classroom sizes is about 15 to 20. So we do very good job at making sure that you are known by your, by your name, by your professors, uh, not just by your student ID number. So St. Martin's was founded in 1895, which was forever ago. So we just celebrated 125 years last year in 2020. So we've been around for quite some time in the Lacey area. Uh, we actually started out as a high school, which is a pretty fun fact, um, and then became a college and then university later on in the years. Uh, undergraduate population, we have about 1,300 undergrad students, so if you're looking for a small, tight-knit community feel for your college experience, that's definitely where St. Martin's is. Um, I actually had a few friends who came from the Alaska area, and they loved that transition to a smaller college size because it really helped them to feel seen on campus um, and not really feel overwhelmed by a very large student body population. So we have about a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which is great. Here's a little snapshot of all of our majors. I know it's quite a list, um, so definitely feel free to take a quick screenshot if you like, but we offer so many different programs. We are a liberal arts university, so you can major and minor in two completely different fields to make your major and degree what you want out of it. Um, we offer bachelor's, master's, and even a PhD program, so we can stay here for up to, I believe, like eight years or so if you'd like. Um, but of course, the bachelor's degrees are only four-year programs. Um, of course, we don't want you to just be studying all day, every day. We want you to actually have fun when you're on campus. So we have more than 40 student clubs for you to join or, or you know, start even a club yourself if, you, if you'd like. That's, that's a really great opportunity there. Um, we offer cultural-based clubs, academic, 
academic based clubs and just personal interests and fun clubs. Um, quick shout out to like our Hawaii club, our um, Latinx Student Alliance, Black Student Union and H Harry Potter club too. Those are pretty fun ones. Um, we are a Catholic based university, but of course you're not required to be Catholic if you um, want to be a student here. We have more than 21 faiths represented through our entire student body. Um, we have a lot of first gen college students as well as the opportunity for you to study abroad if you'd like. We are NCAA Division II, so we do offer some athletic scholarships. If you are interested, definitely get in touch with me. I would be your admissions counselor and I can get your info, your stats, and any videos of you playing to our coaches. We do offer campus housing. We only require you to live on campus your first two years. After that, you can definitely find housing off campus. We have some great areas to live in in the Lacey Olympia area. Scholarships. We award a lot in scholarships every single year to our students, and we're really committed to making sure that um, even though we're a private university, that scholarships and financial aid makes sense for you and is all transparent for you before you make your college decision. Um, lots of free resources for you to take advantage of as a student. And here's our application checklist. Um, it is a free application, so definitely, if you're a senior, definitely apply. We only need your high school transcript and a letter of recommendation. Um, we're totally optional with the essay or test scores, so you don't even have to write an essay if you don't want to. Um, you can apply through our website or through the Common App, which is a great free resource for you to check out. And here's a little uh, contact info for me. If you want to reach out to me, your admissions counselor, you can even scan this QR code and you can follow my Instagram if you want to connect that way. Um, perfect. Uh, hopefully I fit that into the right amount of time. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be in the chat or in the Q&A. So let me know. Thanks, guys. Wonderful. Thank you, Michael. OK, and next up we have Prescott College. Hi, everybody. Thank you. You just get to share in here. Hi, so um, thanks for joining us this evening. My name is Annie McGarry and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for Prescott College. We're a small liberal arts college located in Prescott, Arizona. We've got four seasons, um, so temperatures range between 30 and 90. It's about 5,000 elevation, high desert of central Arizona. Um, so it's kind of like the more northern part with 277 days of shine per year and about 45,000 people in the city itself. Some of our program highlights, so we really focus on experiential education, self-directed hands-on learning. Our classes start at, um, are limited to 14 starting your freshman year. So freshman through senior year, you know that you're going to be in a class of 14 or less. We have a seven to one student faculty ratio with 350 students on our campus. So we're a small school um, when it comes to our undergraduate students living on campus. Um, we have a very intensive orientation program. It's the first class that you take at Prescott College. It's worth four credits, but we have a wilderness, a hybrid, and community options for students to participate in. We have some really cool areas of study that I'm excited to share. So we have 13 different areas within where you can choose your emphasis area. Each one of these has anywhere from five to 10 different emphases you can choose from, but you can also choose to create your own as well. We are a true liberal arts college, so you are going to take classes that are specific to your area of study um, and combine those in with some humanities and social sciences and natural sciences, of course. We really want you though to forget like a standard one size fits all degree. So at Prescott, um, every single student is self-designing what their degree plan looks like with a faculty advisor. So it's as unique as you are. We offer all of these degrees as bachelors of arts, but you can also get a bachelor's of science in the sustainable food systems, as well as in environmental studies. Um, and then we offer a bachelor of fine arts in arts and letters. You can also apply for our accelerated master's degree and earn a bachelor's degree and master's degree in most in five years. In most cases, a couple of our master's degrees are two and a half years, but still you're saving some time and saving some money and getting that bachelor's and master's degree out of the way um, in one swoop, which is great. Although we're small, so we have some really cool travel opportunities. So internationally, students can participate in um, two of our different research centers. One is in Maasai Land, Kenya. The other is in Kino Bay, Mexico. Those are extension campuses of the Prescott campus. So those are courses that are part of our curriculum already and research centers that are part of the Prescott College campus. 
We also have a sister school in Telemark, Norway. So if you're looking for a more traditional study abroad option, you can live with a host family or you can live on campus and take classes through um, the school in, in Telemark. We also have classes that take place in Costa Rica. Domestically, we're a part of some really cool consortiums. Um, SEAL and Eco League are like domestic exchange opportunities. So you can go and study at one of 18 other schools, or you can split your time and do one semester at one school and a second semester at another school. But the benefit to this is that you are not paying anything additional in tuition, your scholarships all stay in place, and classes are guaranteed to transfer. So I love this option, especially for students who are like, ah, 350 seems a little small. Well, now you have this great opportunity to expand your campus and expand your faculty um, and your community. We do have on-campus housing. We ask that all first-time Prescott College students live on campus. We're about 40% transfer students, so there's a great mix of current students and first-time freshmen and transfer students all living in the townhomes together. They are LEED Platinum certified, um, which we are love, and um, you do allow for service animals and then free parking always. We have about 15 different student clubs and organizations on campus, but you can always start your own as well. We do have on-campus dining and a student activity center, as well as a library and meeting spaces, as well as um, like student support services. So any accommodations or anything like that while you're on campus, we have the support for that as well. Our scholarships are merit-based, so they are based off of GPA only. Um, we are test optional, so we're really not looking at test scores when it comes to your scholarships. They range from 15 to 25,000 based off of GPA, and they're guaranteed for all four years that you're a student with us, or eight semesters, basically. They are stackable with all need-based aid as well. So whatever you're receiving through the FAFSA in regards to need-based aid, we'll just stack it right on top of whatever your scholarship is here, as well as any outside scholarships. So we'll just keep on stacking the money until you hit that tuition rate. Um, and then some application information for you. So we are free on our application. Um, our website is there as well as on the Common App. So either way you decide to apply, we're free. Our requirements are an essay transcripts and a reference. Um, no application deadline, although we do have like a priority application of December 15th, but no scholarship deadlines. We are test optional and we do a holistic application review. And I went ahead and put my our FAFSA code down at the bottom um, for you. And then contact information in case you have any additional questions and would like to reach out. So thank you all so much. Hope you have a great night. Thank you, Annie. Okay, next up we have Portland State University. Take it away. Awesome, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Cree Rose Duker. I am the assistant director over at Portland State University, and I also attended PSU as a student, and I really enjoyed my time there. So our campus is actually located in the heart of Portland. We are really about a 15 minute walk from like the downtown Portland area, and everything is super accessible. My first two years living in the city, um, because I came from out of state, I did not have a vehicle and it was super easy to get around and just kind of explore not only our campus at PSU, but Portland as a city and then even get out to other parts of Oregon too. Our campus is pretty large. We have about 26,000 students total. And currently we are the most diverse public university here in Oregon. And so we have students um, like myself or maybe like you who would be coming from out of state to attend PSU. We also have a lot of our local or resident students attending. And then we have a great international student population as well. And so you get to be part of this really cool um, global community in the heart of the city. And we also have a really uh, big number of students, about 37%, who are considered first generation or the first in their family to attend college. And so we have a lot of unique resources and um, different services at PSU to fit the needs of our uh, students and their many identities that they're bringing to campus. 
This is a picture of our PSU park blocks. So if you're ever in Portland or maybe planning a trip sometime soon, um, year round, we have this farmer's market that happens on campus every single weekend. And so that can be a really fun thing to check out while you're in the city. And then our campus is pretty large. It's about 50 acres. Um, there are definitely going to be opportunities and ways for you to make it feel like a smaller community, but you do have a pretty big area that you get to call your campus. Um, even though we are in the city, for those of you who enjoy nature, there is a lot of green or natural spaces on our campus. As you can see, we have over a thousand trees just at PSU alone. And then the city of Portland and Oregon itself has a lot of natural spaces for you to explore too. Um, on our campus, we're about a 15 minute walk from the Willamette River and the South Waterfront, which every spring has these beautiful cherry blossom trees blooming. And for PSU, you're not going to be required to live on campus, but we do have a lot of different housing options for you. So currently we have 10 different residence halls for students to choose from. The thing I really liked about my experience living on campus and something I think a lot of our students enjoy is that our housing is pretty much all apartment style, meaning that if you choose to live on campus, you would have your own kitchen and your own bathroom that you're just sharing with a roommate. So it's a lot more independent than some other um, on campus housing. Or maybe if you're a student who wants to live off campus, maybe you have family in the area or want to live with some friends, you'll have that option too because you're not going to be required to live on campus even in your first year here at PSU. And then this picture is actually our Carl Miller Center. It's our School of Business. So if you're a business major, a lot of your classes would be happening in this building. This is where your advisors would be located and things like that. Um, but I think this building is also a really cool example of what you can find on campus. Because in addition to being somewhere that students take classes and having like study spaces um, and spots for you to eat lunch, it also has restaurants um, over here on the left side on the first floor. It has a rotating retail space um, that our marketing students get experience through. And it also has a rooftop garden. Um, and we have five or six of those on campus. And so those can be really amazing places to study or just kind of hang out when you're on campus at PSU. We do have a very active student population, so there's always a lot to do, regardless of the day or the hour. Uh, we have over 200 student groups to choose from, so those can be traditional things like student government and Greek life. We most recently added a K-pop dancing student club. Um, there's esports, so there's really something for everybody. And then on campus, we do have 15 teams that are division one as well. So if you're interested in playing a sport, PSU can be a great school to do that too. And I would really encourage folks, another way of getting involved is connecting with a cultural or resource center space. And so we have a lot of unique spaces on campus at PSU. These are all of our different cultural and resource centers. And these are spaces where students can go to study, they can attend different events, which are all free, um, and they can get mentorship and scholarships or even work in some of these spaces. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do. And within our cultural resource centers, all of these spaces have student groups you can join too. So this can be a really great way of making community on campus and just kind of finding your home away from home. Currently, some of our biggest um, cultural events on campus are every year we have a powwow and luau, and so those are great ways to get involved. Lots of different majors to choose from, over 200 programs. I'll drop a link in the chat later on so you can kind of explore those. And at PSU, we have about a 28 average first year class size, so pretty small classes, even though you're at a large university. And I know I'm almost out of time, so my last slide here, we are part of the WUI program, 
if you meet these eligibility requirements and those deadlines, you will automatically be awarded. And then we also have this out of state opportunity scholarship. In addition to these two automatic scholarships, we have lots of other opportunities you can apply for too. I'll drop my contact info in the chat and thanks so much for having us today. Thanks so much. Okay, and we have our final institution for the session, and that is Hawaii Pacific University. Aloha, everyone. My name is Susie Prenovo. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions for Hawaii Pacific, and I am based regionally in the Seattle, Washington area. So I work with students from Alaska. So welcome. All right, so we're looking at a picture here of our downtown campus. This is our main campus. We are urban waterfront right on Honolulu Harbor, just steps away from the state capital and business district of downtown Honolulu, Hawaii. We're a private university. We don't have a religious affiliation, about 4,000 undergraduate students. So you will experience small classes, yet have a lot of other students from many different backgrounds that are your roommates and classmates, and you're really learning from one another. 16 to one, uh, student faculty ratio and we have over 45 different undergraduate programs. So not only am I uh, an admissions uh, rep for Hawaii Pacific, I am an alum and I'm also a mom of a current freshman. My son goes to Hawaii Pacific. So I wanted to share with you guys a fun little quick video that um, happened in August at the beginning of our fall semester where we welcome students for move-in day and orientation activities. So let me show you that now and bring a little bit of Hawaii to you. of your HPU Ohana or family, we are a very diverse, we're one of the most, uh, most diverse private universities in the US. That's really what sets us apart from other private universities is just the students themselves. We have students from all 50 states, more than 70 different countries. About 40% of our students are from Hawaii. The rest are mainland or international students. So in those small classes, you're going to have conversations and learning from one another, very diverse communi community of students where you're really kind of having a global experience while you're still in the US. Now here's the island of Oahu. So this is our home. And I mentioned before our main downtown campus, urban, right in the middle of Honolulu. We also have a quieter campus called Hawaii Loa. It's based at the uh, Koala Mountains. Um, we have housing on both sides of campus. Our science programs are also based at our Hawaii Loa campus. And we do have a free shuttle every 15 minutes between those two sides. For marine biology, oceanography, and environmental science students, they can utilize our research campus at Makapu Point. It's our oceanic institute. So we do fin fish, uh, marine mammal studies, we do a, have a shrimp breeding program, uh, tropical uh, resources. We also have a center for marine debris research where we're doing a lot of study on ocean plastics and pollution. Students truly use the whole island though as your campus. So on the weekends, you're checking out the North Shore or going into Waikiki or um, participating in community service or beach cleanups or going hiking or just minutes away from campus. You could be laying on the beach or going paddle boarding or surfing. 
Here are our programs of study. We are a liberal arts and sciences university. So students will take a wide range of general education courses that give you some time to explore um, and then working into your specific major. It's very easy to switch majors at Hawaii Pacific. You can come in undecided. You can come in with whatever you're knowing. Um, you can do a double major, minor very easily as well. Some of our popular program in includes the sciences. So the marine sciences, oceanography, environmental science. We have the largest school of nursing in Hawaii as well. The largest um, group of students taking classes with us though is in our business program. So anywhere from accounting to our hospitality and tourism program. And then a couple of new majors that we have. One is called arts and markets. So it's taking a combination of music, theater or visual arts with business classes. Um, direct entry for engineering, um, international studies is popular as well. So yeah, any of our majors, more details and specifics about that can be found on our website. So you can see your four year plan and see what research has been done. So hands on opportunities, internships. So all students, all majors, we have a 100% internship guarantee. So whether you're a political science student, just walking five minutes from campus to the state capitol buildings or one of our business students working with a multinational corporation right within minutes of campus as well. Uh, we have those opportunities both on island as well as working with you if you're going back home for summer break or even international opportunities. It's easy to get involved on campus and so anywhere from student government to our school paper, clubs and organizations, fun clubs like surf club or hiking club, clubs related to your particular major. If you're musically inclined, we have our orchestra, choir, and band. We also have the largest esports arena in Hawaii. Uh, study abroad, we have over 300 different options to choose from if you choose to leave Hawaii for a semester or a year and go study abroad. We're division two for athletics. So um, we're in the Pacific West Conference. If you are a student athlete, more information and the coach's contact is on our HPU Sharks website. Also under the umbrella of athletics is our cheer team, our dance team and esports, all with scholarships available. When you are applying, we have our own application as well as we take the common app. So whichever is more convenient for you. We have a $45 application fee. If you're a senior though this year and would like to apply, you can just use my fee waiver code, Suzy22, to bypass that $45. Uh, we're gonna be looking at your transcripts. You can include unofficial for admissions purposes before we get your official ones. And then as far as test scores, we are uh, test optional essay and personal or personal statement and recommendation letter. While we like to know more about you and we encourage you to su submit those, they are optional as well. And then for scholarships, we have an automatic program for scholarships based on your GPA that you will receive automatically with your acceptance, renewable all four years. And then we do have stackable talent-based scholarships if you um, are in our choir or band, esports, athletics, cheer, dance, et cetera. And this is my contact information. So again, I'm um, based in Seattle and this is my contact QR code. If you wanted to get on our mailing list, take a quick snapshot of that and I'm happy to work with you. All right, mahalo. Thanks so much, Susie. And thank you to all of our panelists. So fantastic job, everyone. And now I'm excited to welcome you all back so we can go through some Q&A here. So I will kick it off with our first question um, that I wanna pose to the group. What advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? And so I just ask that we start with our, our first presenter um, for today, and that was California State University. Thank you. So this is always a fun question and because there are so many different pieces of advice, but one that I always stick to, um, not just because it's self-serving, but um, I, I say this as, you know, a, a college graduate from <clears throat> a few years ago um, and having been in this profession for a number of years is just keep an open mind. Um, there are so many institutions out there and, you know, 
almost every institution is going to have things to do. They're pretty much all going to have clubs and, you know, the majority of them are going to have sports or, you know, some type of competitive environment for you to get involved. There are ways for you to continue your social life. Um, It's really making sure that you keep an open mind and that you are willing to hear about those institutions that you have never heard about. I have been in this job and I've been going to college fairs when they were in person for the last 10 years. And there are two institutions on this call that I had not heard of before. And I'm sitting here going, that's cool. And I swear if I'd had 150 lifetimes, I would have gone to 150 colleges. <laughs> there are so many great institutions out there. And there are ones that um, you know, are big and small, but there is one school out there that can be the perfect fit for you because of how many there are, not just in the United States, of course, but across the globe. Yeah, that's that's a gr- some great advice there, Jessica. Thanks. Um, I would also say just uh, making sure that the school that you're really looking at has the major that you're wanting. Um, you know, college is about you know this these great experiences throughout these four years and a lot of growth, but it's also about you finding a job afterwards. Um, a big thing I always like to say: What does the school offer you while you're a student? But what does the school offer you also after you get that degree? Um, so career outcomes is huge as well. Um, So definitely be asking that when you're setting up your campus visits and campus tours with all the schools that you might be looking at, whether they're in state, out of state um, or along the Pacific um, Pacific Coast. My advice is going to be to find a way to keep it all organized. Um, As mentioned, there are hundreds thousands of different schools that are out there and they're all going to have different deadlines or scholarships or visit opportunities or whatever the case might be. Um, and so finding a way to keep it all organized myself, I find Excel sheets or Google sheets to be great for me. Um, but again, I would just find a way to be able to write down your top schools and put them all in a place where you can keep track of all those deadlines and all um, of their visit dates coming up and stuff like that. I think similar to Jessica, I would encourage folks to kind of take healthy risks. So looking at schools that maybe you wouldn't have considered, um, maybe areas that are new to you, but sound like they could be a good fit or something fun. And even once you get to college, um, taking healthy risks and trying to explore new things. I think oftentimes that can lead to really just wonderful experiences, whether that's studying abroad, doing an internship and finding a career you're really passionate about, um, maybe exploring a new major or a minor, like a program that you didn't know about before. And so I really encourage y'all to take healthy risks um, for whatever that means to you personally. So I guess my advice for students, and this is coming from a mom whose son is a freshman this year, is pay attention to deadlines, first of all. Utilize your admissions counselor. So uh, each university is going to have someone that is in charge of your area. So don't be afraid to reach out to your admissions counselor at the university that you're looking at. Um, We are very happy to help. Um, Also, pay attention to local scholarships that your high school may be promoting. Go into your um, college counseling office um, and talk to your high school advisors and take that two, three hours out of your weekend to write that essay. There has been students that have gotten many smaller um, scholarships, but those can add up because other students maybe not didn't take the time to write that essay. So definitely use those uh, resources. Great tips, everyone. All right, and we've got just a couple minutes here. So maybe let's try to do like lightning round. What's one thing that you want students to remember about your school specifically? And we'll start right back from the top. 
I, I don't know that it's possible to do a lightning round on that question. That's not fair. Um, with us, I would emphasize how hands-on we are. A lot of, of uh, young men and women today really learn by doing. That's why YouTube, I think, uh, got a rejuvenation. Um, so for us, we, like I said, state-of-the-art labs and simulators, that 500-foot training ship, as well as tugboats. And then for our business global studies programs, they go to conferences, they go, uh, they go to various competitions where you know they put together marketing plans and a number of other things they definitely weren't doing 10 years ago when I got our business, you know, our business program, and I thought our program was hands-on. So I would just like to emphasize how extraordinarily hands-on all seven of our programs are to prepare you for your internship, which is required, and then, of course, for your career opportunities. Yeah, and I'd like to say that 90% of our graduates find a job within six months of graduating. So we're very career oriented after you graduate and you'll always have lifelong um, availability of our career center. Although we're a small private university, there are so many opportunities to find a job or get internships um, during your time as a student or after, but uh, since we're right by the state capital of Olympia, Washington. It looks like we have a theme because I'm going to say about Prescott College to that um, I want you to know that we have a very experiential education. Our students spend 70% of their time outside of the classroom. So it's very career focused. We want to make sure that you're interning and you're job shadowing and you're really getting a chance to experience what that career could look like, as well as building that resume that's going to complement your degree. And I would just say that you have such a diversity of experiences. Um, I think our urban location really sets the tone for you to have a lot of different opportunities. Every single one of our students will do an internship or some sort of community project. And so you're not only getting prepared, but getting connected to this wider community at Portland State. So we tend to attract a very independent, adventuresome student. So just like you guys are in Alaska. Also keep in mind, average air temperature, 77 degrees, average water temperature, 74 degrees. Love it, thank you all so much. So just wanna say thank you again for all of our presenters today. So just a couple of things as we wrap up. Uh, when you close this window out, there is going to be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd of course appreciate any feedback that you can provide on that. So we can continue to offer programming like this. Uh, we'd encourage you to check back the schedule. This is the final session for today, but we do have some of our schools coming back for panel presentations tomorrow. So I'd encourage you to check out the schedule and you can see that at strivescan.com slash Alaska. And you can also find all of the recordings from today, this one included, as well as all the other sessions at that same link. So with that, again, just wanna say one last thank you to all of our schools who are here today. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you.